bodied wine is the best. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> when the night sky fills with glamour, a lovely story awaits you. Good evening. Welcome to the Golden Playhouse special feature. Do I see some new faces? Once again, your guide for the night is me. The Midnight Venus, Trisha. Have you heard about this scary rumor? They say if you fall in a dream and don't wake up before you land, you die in real life. Tonight's story is Catherine Full Body, the second coming of an unconventional romantic horror. A man with a certain curse has a terrifying and dramatic week. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> well, like I said... This is Catherine, but with a fuller body. It's aged nicely, with a sensual flavor, not unlike a fine wine. Our hero in this story is Vincent Brooks, age 32. He is an earnest and kind man. But one day, we begin to see him have terrifying nightmares. Amidst the storm of temptations around him, he has another chance encounter. And an awfully cute one at that. But doesn't this seem a little... <laughs> convenient? Oh my, sounds like a recipe for disaster. Will Vincent be able to overcome the massive blocks in his life? Perhaps he'll take a road less traveled. <laughs> his outcome depends on you, viewers. Sorry to keep you waiting. Raise the curtains. It's time to savor the marriage of pleasure and pain. Now enjoy the show, until we meet again. Welcome back to the four long ago nightmares of Kathwin, as we we enter the Golden Playhouse in Kathwin, full body. This is a uh, wee mastering, you could say. Bit of a port, more of a enhanced version, so it'd probably be master be a little bit more. But I wouldn't say there was graphically too much completely done, but there is a lot of new content and changes. Some good, some bad, and some indifferent, depending on different things. But we'll get in that as we go. So. As someone who played the original Catherine, like, it's one of the oldest playthroughs I've done on my original channel before I even had a Let's Play side channel. But, so, Catherine Full Body's enhancements for those who are returning to this are that there's a new character to get in a relationship, so you have three goals instead of two. You have Babylon is unlocked automatically as opposed into the original version where you had to, I believe, beat the high schools on hard to unlock it in the original copy. They introduce Coliseum and Online Arena, which Coliseum is just local and Online Arena is where you can do Babylon or the Coliseum in online mode. Now, I don't think the original version of Catherine had uh, Japanese voiceover options, if I remember correctly. I could be wrong on that, but I don't think it did. You do have options for Japanese, and I did play through on the Japanese dub since I played the original version on English. And um, some new, new differences, they dropped... Continues in the original version you had continues and if you weren't playing on easy um, You could essentially get into a dead end on your continues playing on harder modes um, Continues are gone pillows 
give you more undos. I will give some criticism about that uh, when we get to gameplay a bit more. Um, they added a retry assist mode, which I haven't tried, but from what I understand, um, when you uh, like retry or do something, it'll play a portion of the puzzle automatically for you until it gets to the furthest point you've been to. Uh, you have tutorials you can turn on. There are online features now that because there's the online arena. Uh, there's a few interesting little online things. You can see fragmented little souls to indicate where people died. Kind of sounds like a wee bit like a bloodstain in Dark Souls a little bit, but you don't you don't have the effect of seeing what they did. Just where they died, where they last was when they died. Um, you get to see how many people have died on that section of the tower you're climbing. That seems kind of bugged because it never really seems to change much until you get near the end. And again, we'll talk about some problems that are with the um, online. There's a backside camera. I do remember when you went to the backside of the tower, it was a little janky so now you can turn on a backside camera where it'll flip all the way to the back so it makes it a little less weird and uh the last real big difference i'd say is um they did add also an easier mode safety mode so now you have safety easy normal and hard but to top that off um there is classic and remix so classic is well Class Catherine with lots of blocks. Remix throws in these kind of Tetris blocks into the mix. So you'll have these weird shaped blocks and they all move as one mass. In my first playthrough, I did a full body, uh, which I did blind before I did a guided playthrough to, tr to interact more with the new character they added. Um, I did uh, back the classic. So, um, Remix is a little interesting. I say definitely worth a shot if you played the original Catherine. But to be quite honest, I kind of feel like for a good chunk of situations, it made some of them easier and other ones harder. So, it, it kind of varies on your puzzle solving and how you think through a situation. But personally, I feel like most situations, Remix actually made it easier than harder. And I think the reason for that is because... It being a weird, misshapen, single-layer entity versus just an individual block, you have, you know, limited outcomes of what you can do with it. So I think in the end, it just kind of makes it more likely to figure out a way through. But it was still fun to try since I had already done the original Catholic. Now... Some people, I, when I was playing through this, a few people were like, man, that the Widgerl Catherine was really fucking hard. And it was. If you didn't play on easy, if you played normal or especially hard, it was pretty damn brutal. So if you're one of those people that wanted to play the harder difficulties, I did my playthrough of full body on normal since they got rid of the continue system. I won't lie, I played on easy on the original version because I did die a lot. <laughs> I did die a lot, and I was afraid that I'd get in a situation where I would be screwed over with no more continues. So, this game is vastly easier, in my opinion, compared to the original version. So, if you found the original version difficult in any way, honestly, this is definitely an easier version. And when it comes to the actual gameplay, story, and such... Uh, there are still more differences. On top of, like I said, there's a new character into the mix of the romancing storyline. Uh, they did actually add a lot of new scenes for the other two Catherines. So, the new character is named Wynn, but she's also referred to as Catherine. Uh, Cla it's basically Catherine with a Q. I don't know if you have to make it sound a little Q-ish or not. But everyone just calls a win, so it seemed kind of like a throwaway thing, to be honest. Um, they added, of course, Wynn has all her own scenes and stuff, which are all new. But they added some flashback scenes with K. Catherine and C. Catherine that um, kind of build a little bit more on his relationships with the two. They kind of go into more about how K. Catherine and Vincent got together in the new scenes and that. So, they kind of build up on the original cast while building on the new one. Uh, there were a few slight changes. And 
personally, I disagree with one of them because it just it was Vincent's character, but that has to do with some drama and spoilers, and we'll get into that uh, much later in this. So, I just do want to mention, uh, if you played the original game, uh, there were some slight changes. We'll go into those spoiler slight changes, though, way later in this video when we get to the spoiler section, though. So, for those unfamiliar with Catherine, Catherine is a romance simulator by day and a death puzzle by night. Imagine, like, a weird death cubal game, I guess. So you climb this tower moving blocks around and that, and as you progress through the storyline, newer and newer blocks that have different effects that can either kill you, make you slip, explode, damage other blocks, change blocks, and it just keeps adding new blocks as you keep climbing up this nightmare tower every night as the game progresses forward. Now, Catherine isn't a really long game, especially if you skip all the cutscenes. You can, like, uh, when I we played the do win storyline, I was able to breeze through like half the game um, by skipping cutscenes until we start getting new stuff with win. Uh, it's amazingly short when you skip a lot of cutscenes. The story definitely uh, fans your time up a bit more. But even then, it's still a pretty short game. But hey, you you got a relationship issue where he's in a relationship with a high school level and he gets caught up in like a cheating situation and you have to dictate in his love life whether he feels like he should go after this new goal commit to k Catherine, or with when feel like a completely different relationship with someone you just met so, you got a lot of different options. You can play, you know, what your preference is, or you can just try to get all the endings. There are multiple endings for each character. Generally, they follow a rule of a really good outcome with them, a mm, and then a kind of you got torn down outcome. There includes a freedom ending where you basically don't choose anyone, and that has a good and bad version of it, too. And it's all dictated by a little meter. Now, this meter is a little different in full body. It still dictates your relationship with C and K, Catherine. But with when, um, there are certain questions you have to answer a certain way to get a different outcome where it doesn't involve the meter, uh, the meter at all. Instead, it will cause a plant to be growing out of the meter, and that has to do with when. So they didn't they didn't mush her into the meter system somehow. They just made her completely ignore it. Now, when adds something completely new to the gameplay that wasn't in the original Catherine. So, she shows up in the Nightmares after a little bit of the beginning of the game, and she'll play the piano. And she adds a new element where if the collapsing bottom of the tower is getting close to you, she'll play the piano, and it slows down the process of it collapsing. Now, I kind of felt like the tower collapses a little faster. That could be just simply because I was playing on normal instead of easy like I did on the original PS3 release of the game. So that might have something to do with it, but I did feel like it collapsed a little faster. That could also have been an adjustment because of adding win into the game, but that's... I would have to play normal on the PS3 version to really conform whether that's the case, but... Generally, the puzzle solving is not necessarily everyone's cup of tea because, you know, this is an Atlas game. Most people are used to JRPGs from them, so you obviously have to be into either the story or the puzzle solving. I know there's been people who really love the story, but they weren't really too keen on the puzzle solving, but suffered through it for the story. And like I said, this is a vastly, like, this gives you a lot of options to make the game very easy if you just want to experience the story in that sense. So, that's a kind of general overview of the game. Now, I have a lot of things to comment on with spoilers, so let me first talk about the online stuff before we get into spoilers section. So, this game came out last year, and I've given it lots of time in the hope that Atlas would fix the online, and they have never... Neville ever gave it a fucking update. 
So, I think it's safe to say they're probably not going to. So, as much as this is going to pain me, because this is probably going to be one of the things that are going to interest returning players, online is broken. Don't fucking buy it for the online. There was nobody playing online. I've even tried today for two hours to see if I could find anyone. And even if you do, it's broken. There's some kind of syncing issue. As you move blocks and get away from each other, it, it just doesn't keep up and disconnects you. So online became completely dead. So you can't do Babylon co-op or the battle mode. Now you can play local or you could do a shale play on PS4. So... You do have those options for local, but online, don't buy this game for online unless they actually update it. But it's been about like a half year now, and they have not released a single update. And that's, that's to me, a big blemish on Atlas, because I always give Atlas a lot of credit for, like, Persona 5 never got an update at all, and it's a perfectly, a perfectly well-programmed game in there. So it's, it just feels like a sad blemish that not only is it broken, they haven't fixed it. And that's a real sad thing to me. Because that was one of the big features I was looking forward to. Because I never got to play Babylon in the original Lisa because I couldn't unlock it. You had to be really skilled to get it unlocked. And Babylon has a side story in it. So that's kind of the, the disappointing thing about it. So online's completely dead but you can still do Babylon and Coliseum boss matches local so that's about what I have to say about that so from here on out we're gonna be there's a strong warning we're gonna be talking about various spoilers at different portions of the story so you know be well so let's get on it so first thing what do I think of the new Kyoto win Wynn's a very nice, kind person, and she kind of offers a different cup of tea. Because, I mean, Kay Catherine's like the serious, successful person. Like, Dan hated it. <laughs> a lot of people actually hate Kay Catherine, I uh, you know, on, uh, oddly enough. Uh, but she's a very serious and determined person. We'll see Catherine's like very open, fluid, and uh, f carefree. That when offers more of a comfortable relaxing and supportive kind of wall where the other two didn't in that kind of sense. Now, the important thing to note with Wynn here for some people in the drama-ishness is Wynn also represents um, basically a gay relationship. You, you basically find out Wynn is actually male. And since when now this is something I can't find an answer to because it's something I was curious about. When directly accepts being called male in the game when asked your guy basically and he's like, yeah. So that to me seems to signify that when identifies as a male. Even though Wynn never really corrects anyone referring to them as a female. And you could chalk that up to the ladle thing you unveil about uh, when we'll get there in a second. But um, I was kind of curious with the Japanese version. Because subtitles don't always necessarily tell you exactly what the Japanese... Like, I've seen moments where people have told me the voice actors said literally nothing that was in the subtitles so i don't know if in the japanese version how when we acts to that or um replies to that question so i'm kind of curious about that because if when identifies as a male then that would mean when's not a trans character just enjoys dressing up in feminine clothing but Later, you're told when is an angel on the new ninth day in the game that only exists for Wynn's path, which adds a new block type and a new boss type on top of the existing uh, events of the game. And I did have fun with the new boss. So you're given the information that Wynn is an angel and Wynn's brother is an angel. So you, 
I, I kind of was like, ha, I called it, but the game actually trolled you and uh, went hailing you didn't. And actually, you find out the aliens that fake being angels because for some reason a long time ago, people worshipped them. So they took the Gaius of being angels. So they're actually aliens. Now, you could take when maybe he's just very naive and doesn't really either care about being identified as a particular gender or whatever. So, from what I understand, it seems like when is more of a gay relationship than a trans relationship. But it doesn't really... It's not like a big deal either way. It's still a other option. Now, I don't think when was necessarily a completely waste of time. But I do feel like a few things in Wynn's storyline was rushed. Like, the reveal with Boss is... Very different. Like, when I originally played this game, I made a scoff joke that that boss was the mastermind way, way back when I originally played that. And it was just a, you know, a joke because the kind of thing, like, the butler did it, the bartender, the, it, you know, it was just a shitty kind of obvious, too obvious kind of thing of that. But the, it was hilarious that it turned out to be boss. But I like the way that boss's reveal happens because Vincent doesn't even approach him to, you know, say he's the mastermind. He just wanted to know that C. Catherine actually existed because at that point in the story, everyone never seen her and thinks he's crazy. So, um, in Wynn's story, instead, um, you have the nightmare chase part where you have the person you chose to have a relationship with and you have to help them climb to the top of the tower. Uh, Wynn gets taken away from, uh, taken away from, uh, Vincent, and you hear a clip that apparently sounds like boss, it sounds more like Sea Catherine to me, I'd have to we listen to it, but apparently in the bathroom stall, he'll like, that sound like the bartender guy at and then that whole scene plays out. I kind of felt like that wasn't as good as the original review myself. I think that's actually the weakest part in Wynn's version of the story, though. But um, I didn't really hate Wynn. I didn't feel like she was... She, he... See, that's the kind of confusing thing when you look at Wynn as a... If you look at Wynn as a trans character. Because Wynn never really directly says ever as far as I am aware of whether they will fall to themselves as a male or female. Like I said, when asked if they're male, they're just like, yeah. Don't get mad or anything. They're just like, yeah. So, I, it's kind of confusing to know whether you should will fall to win as a she or he. Obviously, for, to avoid spoilers, you should keep saying she. But, once you know whether when it's just kind of a confusing situation to be on how you will for the win but um <laughs> but you'll you'll play the ninth day with win in that and she'll be playing during boss's section of the story win goes away for the piano so you're just back to normal Catherine but for the ninth day um win returns to play the piano as you climb the new version of the towel Again, to go against her brother on that, but um, the alien thing at first to me seemed really random. Um, I, I was just kind of like aliens, fucking alien, what? But apparently, I never got uh, in my original playthrough on the original version of Catherine. I got the happy ending with K Catherine where they got married and shit. So apparently, one of the endings you actually get to find out they're actually on a space station. So, um. They're in space on a giant space station, so that leads to some other interesting ideas I want to bring up in a bit. But I don't feel like cat. Uh, uh, I don't feel like Win was completely pointless, but I feel like she could use a little more tweaking on being in with the storyline related to Boss. I felt like that part was kind of eh, but. She's no option. She does make a few interesting segments a little more interesting, like the whole cheating and someone's out to screw Vincent. Because, you know, for a good chunk of the game, uh, the wheel masterminds kind of try to make Vincent think somebody who knows is doing this to him. So, when kind of adds like a third wheel to the whole idea, somebody is fucking with him and shit. 
So she does enhance some parts of the story, but I felt like going down a loot kind of lessened a few events. Like I said, the part with Boss, I felt like wasn't done very well in Wind's Path, but I really enjoyed the ninth day and the fight with her brother, so it was still fun doing Wind's Path, but it's just a wee bit different because you have to answer the questions a certain way to go down Wind's Path. And I was pretty close to doing that my first playthrough, and I apparently just messed up one of the questions, so. Now, as for the other two Catherines, as I said, there were flashbacks with K. Catherine, and there's a few new scenes with C. Catherine. But overall, each character has a new ending. Well, um, to be honest, I actually really like the new C. Catherine ending. So the K. Catherine ending's kind of a freedom ending for K. Catherine, while the new ending with C. Catherine's kind of more of a romantic happy ending for Vincent and C. Catherine versus the lustful happy ending they get in the original game. And I really liked it. I'm not going to really spoil uh, the contents of those endings. I'd just say um, you could either learn them through playing or you could just look them up. But I, I actually thought they were both nice additions to the Catherine. So, and there's new dialogue, and like I said, there was some dialogue change. There's a, 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 a twist in the original game as you find out Erica is a trans character. Now, she is an actual trans character. Well, Wynn is a little subjective. I, like I said, I don't know if the localization um, made, like, made it a certain way or not. It, it, it's kind of confusing to know whether Wynn is just uh, gay or trans, because uh, like I said, you could... You could boil it down to involving a little bit of her being naive because she's an alien. She's basically never really interacted with people because she, she she does seem very confused and everything during the course of the story and that. So, uh, a bit naivety. But Elka is an actual trans character. She was uh, a friend of Vincent and his gang when they were uh, younger and she transitioned at... Like, it's, uh, from what I kind of gather with the story, it sounds like around high school or something. But, um, in the original version, Erica's name in the credits was, um, the uh, original name, which was Eric. Now, that changed, they changed it to Erica in the credits, and I think that's fine. Because I think that's respectful towards the character. I don't think it, like, needed the meltdown some people had with the whole thing, but... Because, uh, you know, they're just fictional characters. But I do still feel like it's a little respectful to the actual character. Now, a, there's a scene where Vincent... It's it's a hint at the fact that Erica is a trans character. Um, but it was changed in the full body where um, Erica will, like, give Vincent some vice at this one point. And he'll, he'll say something like, um, you know, that means something if it came from an actual woman, hint, hint. Now, look, I'm not here to say that Vincent's the greatest guy in the world. I wouldn't say he's the worst guy in the world. But he certainly also has his fucked stupid shit he's done in his life, too, you know. And everyone does fucking stupid shit once in a while, you know. But it's just a story, though. People who go too into it and think that... A Kildo's thoughts means like the people who made the game think the same thing. It's just who Vincent was. He's a sarcastic asshole. That's how him and his gang of friends are. They kind of take bad jabs at each other. And that's just kind of how they interact with each other. And that's just kind of how I interpret Vincent. So I kind of felt like that change was unnecessary. But is a change they did. Whether you think it's right or wrong is something that's subjective to you. I just personally felt like it, it was a forced change on Vincent's character. It's just who he was. It wasn't an asshole thing, yes. But I, I just kind of feel like that's how him and his friends interact with each other. They all take... I mean, look at all the times they all take jabs at him during the course of the story. That's how they interact with each other, so... But... I don't think it's like the end of the world. It's not like they changed the whole story. But like I said, it's just a little minor change. I don't personally agree with it. But subjective from person to person. It oddly enough had a lot of controversy over it though. Way too much in my opinion. So that's a lot of the things that they changed, added, new stuff to expect. 
But in general, if you go down the original routes with K and C, Catherine, you're just going to get a few extra scenes and dialogue and text messages and wins just present as a piano player during the early mid section. She just kind of vanishes for the rest of the game uh, if you don't go down whole route. So it's generally the original experience. Now my first playthrough I got the happy ending with K Catherine again. I did not get win my first playthrough. I had to get a guide to figure out uh, what I did wrong to do win uh, my second one through. Um, in general, they, they just made a lot of things easier. Some other stuff they also did is they added a lot of music from P5 and a few other Atlas pro um, properties that didn't exist or weren't made at the time into the jukebox. So, so there's some new music. And, oh, oh, you know, I almost forgot. They also added two new characters to save uh, during the tower climb. In the original game, there were several characters who were troubled and having the nightmare as well and need encouragement to keep living on to overcome their problems. They introduced the two new characters. I did save both of them my first blind playthrough. So uh, they're both uh, pretty simple to, in my opinion, to understand. And I think they actually were a very nice addition that went with the theme, the adult themes of uh, Catherine growing up in real life and such. I think they were both nice touches. But in general, there's a decent amount of new content, but unless you're really into Wynn's character, that's, that's more minor new content than because, like I said, each of the original Catherines have only one new ending. K. Catherine benefits more because all the flashback scenes relate to her. Because, obviously, see Catherine ain't in there. Uh, but, so there's a lot more new, like, animated scenes for K. Catherine and Vincent's relationship. But they both get a new ending in that. So, I'd say there's a decent amount of new content if you want to go down each kill those woots and try to get all the endings of that if you just want to play it one time and go for your favorite character and you played the original version it's not really much new in that sense personally what i think was the more disappointing aspects of the game myself is as i said the online was a big big interest to me and it's broken it's fundamentally broken. Maybe maybe they'll still fix it, but it's been like over half a year, like I said. But the other thing that was kind of disappointing to me is... Now, I'm, I'm not bad-mouthing that they added new options to make it easier. That's fine. What I, but I feel like is the general game itself was all made easier, though. The continue system helped offer a challenge in the original version. They completely scrapped it. So pillars give you undoes. Now in the original game, you could only get three undoes. Now you can get, I think I got up to like nine undoes. And they really break the game. Not just because of what you're thinking, because they let you undo a move. When you do the boss fight nightmares, you can use undoes to just basically cancel out the attacks and keep climbing. It, it really fundamentally breaks some of the boss fights in this game because you you have so many extra undoes usually you can just basically use them to cancel out and you get undoes back for making moves and moving up so as long as you know what you're doing you can fundamentally make many enemy bosses just blow like you, you can just break the fights and I, I i feel like that was not thought about when they did that but, in general, the un like, unless you know about that, I mean, it's something I noticed, I think, around the baby nightmare. I started realizing, you know, when, when I think about it, like, the undoes are really just destroying the boss's moves, making the blades and shit. Because when you do an undo after the boss did something, it also undoes that. And sometimes, like, it'll sit there for a second, like, it's reevaluating what it wants to do next. And it, it just really breaks a lot of the boss fights. It depends on the boss fight you're referring to. Some of them still can be a bit challenging. But it's if used right, you can count all those special moves they do. But 
aside from that, it's it's still the Catherine experience. It still has a very enjoyable story and everything. If you've never played the original Catherine, I'd say sure, go for it. Because, I mean, I'm sure hard is still fucking hard, even with some of the abusable things that make the game easier now. But, and like I said, I played through it on normal, but that continue system is a lot more manageable in that sense, because the limited continues really kind of I, I'm not necessarily saying that I liked the, the continue systems, but it did offer a challenge in the original version. Is there any reason to go back to the original version? Like, if you're a returning player, it really depends on whether any of the new content interests you, or if you're just going to go for K and C Catherine again. They both do have one additional ending, but it just kind of depends on is the new content worth it? Because with the online mode broken there's just there's nothing interest that unless you have you know local people then you got that but the the online is broken and that that to me i feel like was a fundamental thing for returning people but just saying but for people playing this who might be curious should i go play the original catherine now the original catherine is super cheap and actually just got on Steam for some reason. I don't know why they put it on Steam. But the original, they're calling it Catherine Classic, was put on Steam too. But, um, you know, if you're going console wise with PS3 and 360, it is super cheap. The only reason I could think you would want to go from full body to that is if you want the game to be fucking harder. Because with continues on hard, it's vastly going to be harder. And limited undoes. So if you want a harder experience, you could go that route. But I, other than that, the, the small things they changed aren't like the end of the world. But that's about the only ways I would imagine going to full buy to the originals if you want even more of a difficult experience. Aside for that, overall, Catherine Full Body, it's an okay game. Again, I played the original, so it's a little lesser to me. But for anyone who's never played Catherine, I think it's worthwhile to check out. Just don't expect online to be walking. I'm pretty sure it's never going to get fixed at this point. But it could change. Could change. Probably have to Google to see if it's changed. But at the moment, is 100% fucking broken and dead. Is just likely going to be like that and this is getting a switch version which is a little concerning because if they take out the online mode they'll basically admitting we don't know what's wrong with it and we can't fix it and if they put it in and it's fixed and they never fix our versions then it's again a weird issue of what the fuck what about those who bought the first releases of it or they could still leave it in and let it be broken, which I would imagine would uh, build up more negativity towards the game's release. <laughs> but, but the Switch version is not out yet, so I can't comment on that. I would, I would say if you're interested in the Switch version, to probably make sure it's a decent port. Because, as I always say, I'm always wary of third-party games on the Switch, because a lot of times. It gets half-assed ports. Sometimes you get gold like Dragon Quest XI was. And sometimes you get a lot of shitty versions like Bloodstain. I heard the uh, wonderful 101 remaster on Switch is also horrible, I hear. So, you get situations like that. So, mm. Now, I have the regular version of this game. I had the collector's edition of the PS3, which came in a pizza with this awesome pizza box. That This had a pretty nice collector's edition, but obviously they want to fork out more cash for something that's just a bit of, for me it was going to basically be an expansion of the game there now of course for those looking for some replay value on top you do have a platinum full trophy list some of them are from the original and some of them are a few new additions of that a few change ups here and there but in general, for anyone repeating trophy achievement ones, uh, you're going to see a lot, of familiar a lot of familiar ground with a few new ones of that. Um, I would assume the classic version on Steam has uh, 
achievements, I would imagine, too, I would think. But, um, outside that, I think that generally covers my thoughts on Catherine Full Body itself. But I do, I do have one more thing I want to throw out, though, of interest, though. Um, before we get to that, though, the value for the game. So, being a Wii Mastery type experience, with what I would essentially, like I said, call a expansion to the original game, I think it's a good $49.99 price game. I don't think it added a shit ton, like, in the main way, like, I would probably give it a $59.99 if online wasn't broken. There's a few choices I disagree with, but I do love how they had Babylon just unlocked and you get more of it as you progress through the story. So after you beat the game, you get to experience the full story, side story that's in Babylon. But I just find the fact that online was broken takes a hit to the game because I feel like that was... A interesting mode for veterans of the original game to either play co-op in Babylon or to battle each other in Coliseum and it's just a shame because even though you can play local which is good you know especially for the versus mode it's gonna get old going up against the same one or two po people you'll likely be able to drag into your living room to play Coliseum you know online you'll have all kinds of different crazy people you can go up against and it's just broken it's just a shame. So, I would give it a forty nine ninety nine value. Would be my cup of tea with the game. But as at its current value, uh, you're looking at. Let's take a look here, Catherine. Full body. The current going prices. The limited edition still available for seventy nine ninety nine. Uh, currently, PS four version is. $52.99 new. Looks like used is around $49.99 used. On. Um, actually, you know, now I think about, is there even an Xbox One version? I actually don't remember. No. It didn't actually get an Xbox One version. I, I actually never even thought about that until just now. Huh. <laughs> That's weird because it, it the original version was on the 360, so I guess they just decided to skip out on that. So looking at some of the prices, we'll look at GameStop because usually you can get the lower end price there. But you're probably not gonna find much of a difference there. Um, they have it pre-owned for 49.99, new for 59.99. So it looks like it's still. A bit high teal. Looks like you're gonna get down to the forty dollar range used currently. And interestingly, the Switch version is forty nine ninety nine, so it's actually ten dollars cheaper than buying the PS4 version. That's an interesting, interesting uh, choice though to make it a little cheaper. Kind of makes me wonder if they're kicking the... Because I haven't heard anything about the online with the Switch version, so... Looks like it's still a little bit of a premium. You could always wait for Black Friday. I wouldn't be shocked to see it for 29 maybe even nineteen ninety nine for Black Friday if you want to wait for a bigger price drop. But I think forty nine ninety nine is a good value out of the game. So the last little tidbit I would like to throw out there is this this is a theory in the persona -ness -ness. So Vince like back when this game was originally developed, this game the point of this game was to test out the engine that would become the basis of Persona five was the original point of Catherine. And they made a small hint towards this game's development in P3P, Persona 3 Portable, where in the bar there is a character named Vincent, and I guess you could essentially call it Beta Vincent, since there are a few slight differences between the two, but he has his uh, familial afro and such, and being drunk and having problems and nightmares. But um, I have a very bizarre theory about Catherine. So it's been argued for quite a long time whether Catherine takes place in the Persona universe, its own universe, or in one of the many SMT universes. And as far as I know, there's never been an official answer, but I got an interesting theory. I don't know if anyone's ever 
thought of. The fact that we learned that the game takes place in space, and then Persona, Persona isn't, this is going to have, uh, just to explain, this has spoilers to Persona 2 Innocence and in, in Eternal Punishment, just just so you have that awareness. Anyway, at the end of Innocent Sin, uh, the world is destroyed except for one city floating in space on a spaceship and the people granted a wish of becoming ideal humans, essentially being super intelligent shit. I wonder if it's possible that Catherine takes place in the Innocent Sin universe. Because in, uh, I'm playing through Eternal Punishment as, as the time of this review, and they keep referring to uh, the Innocent Sin timeline as the other side, which makes it sound like it still technically exists. So if that's the case, it makes me wonder if Catherine takes place in the Innocent Sin's timeline in the future of when Persona 3 would take place. Because that's where you see Vincent in Persona 3 is doing its timeline, where he's having nightmares and stuff. So you could potentially make the argument that Catherine is taking place in the year that Persona 3 does, but in the Innocent Sin timeline. Because of them being ideal humans on a spaceship, it's probably easy to think they could build spaceships and start colonizing uh, the universe. So, it, it's an interesting thought. It crossed my mind. I thought I'd share it out there with that. I don't know if that's some... If anyone's ever came up with that idea or not. But, it sounds like an interesting thought process. Maybe to look into more. Anyway, those are my thoughts on Catherine Full Body. If you feel like you have any questions about the game, feel free to leave a comment down below. If you feel like you learned anything interesting, feel free to leave a like. And if you feel like you learned absolutely nothing at all, feel free to leave a like. A, a, a feel free to leave a dislike. Feel free. And if you're watching on Twitch, I hope you'll check out more reviews or other playthroughs on Twitch as well. Thank you. And of course, you can also message me if you have any questions uh, about the game if you're watching this on Twitch. Anyway. You all be safe in your nightmares out there, and have a very good Memorial Day. Thank you for watching. Until next time, here at the Proving Grounds. I'm safe, right? Yeah! Congratulations! Amazing climbing! The prison of despair could not hold you. Thank <laughs> you.